Hey, 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 it's Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide. Gonna give you an end of the week rundown. End of the week rundown. Saturday, September 12th, 2020. We talked a little bit yesterday, we talked about lower water temperatures, tremendously lower water temperatures from the rain and the cool trend last week. 81 in the morning. I had two half day trips today, 7 to 11 and noon to 4. The afternoon really changed back to 85 degrees. I got a star by that. There's a reason for that. Two days of clear skies, stable weather, warm trend again. Okay? Remember that we said that. One to two foot visibility, lake looks awesome. Gunmetal blue. A little bit of turnover in some areas, but I think this is going to be one of the best falls we've had since I've moved to Texas in seven years. 40158, the water is dropping very slowly. Okay, um, 40160 yesterday. That's basically a foot and a half below full pool. Okay, remember when water is rising, fish rise and come in, move to the backs, move up. When water really rises, they'll move up so much, we say they're counting the ants. They're that shallow on the shoreline. When the water falls, it pulls them out, points them out, meaning main lake points, secondary points, points them out. Big tip of what I just said. What's the water been doing for two days? Dropping, okay? Let's tell you about my fishing for the day been pretty tough most of the week. This morning was pretty much the same. Pretty tough morning trying to find things. The star, 85 degrees. Once that changed, the afternoon was a whole different world, folks. So this morning, we're kind of junk fishing. We're throwing top waters, both poppers and walkers. We're throwing underspins, three inch and seven inch, five and seven inch, okay? Uh, mixing it up. Junk fishing means you got 15 different rods on the deck of the boat and you're just, you're chucking everything at them. Shallow, okay? Caught some fish, no big ones, a few unders, a few decent, maybe one slot fish or so. No money fish. The morning was pretty tough. Probably the best bait of the morning would have been the underspin. If we'd have stayed with the underspin, covered some patternistic water, probably could have had a good numbers day, but they were small. All right. Once the afternoon trip progressed, the tables turned. I recognized that the water temperature really, really climbed. I remember the water's dropping. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to start to pull out. I'm going to start to go back to those basic summer patterns that I was fishing. Brush piles, shell beds. A little bit shallower than I've been. Instead of 18 to 22, more like 10 to 14 on the brush piles. But what I found is there's a bunch of fish in the four to eight foot range pointed out, drawn out, secondary points and main leg points, four to eight feet of water. Um, that seemed to be the deal. Um, my client wanted to go fish some docks because a lot of times these tournaments, this up and coming Sealy Bass Splash, the docks hold some quality unders from time to time. They're residential fish sometimes, so they're a little different. A 15 and three quarter inch offshore schooler may weigh 2.5 pounds. You catch a dock fish that's 15 and three quarters, he may weigh three pounds, 15 ounces. More residential, not burning the calories. So we go to a couple sets of my favorite docks. And uh, lo and behold, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, The Lake Fork Guide on Instagram, Mike McFarland on Facebook, and The Lake Fork Adventures Guide Service on Facebook, then you already know. But the second dock we came to, um, I'm pitching, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. I'm pitching a small jig, finesse jig. And I literally come around, I, I start from shallow and I work the walkway and I work the outside edge. I get to the front and I work the front. And now I'm working the backside, coming around the backside of the second dock. It's the second dock that I've fished in two years. I don't fish docks very rare. Lo and behold, I stick a seven pound, six ounce, 24 inch over 
an over from the dock. So, with that being said, what I want to tell you is the afternoon was a great bite. We actually caught quite a few fish. My fisherman this afternoon was a stud. Um, he could make them bite, and he caught plenty of fish. Uh, most everywhere we stopped, we caught a fish or two, especially on the brush piles. Um, but let's tell you about what we're doing. And since I said I'm junk fishing, all right, I got buzz baits, poppers, underspins, square bills, chatter baits, sinkos, big worms, jigs, shaky heads. I got it all out, okay? Or all available. But I'm going to give you the top three, the top three most producing baits right now for me. The number one bait that probably caught the most fish today was the Carolina rig. Talked about it yesterday. A little chicken rig, not a full-blown rig, but a lightweight Carolina rig. This one here is 15-pound mainline, 12-pound leader, only about two feet a liter. Impact shad, impact five-inch shad, watermelon, magic red. The sun's shining. I told you yesterday that's what you throw. That's just what we did. And that probably caught the most fish today. Now, my client, the afternoon, did go back to the shaky head. He went to the Santone football shaky head with the watermelon candy magnum trick worm. And uh, he caught a few nice fish in one big slot as well. Um, but I can tell you right now what I would be doing if I was in this tournament and I was looking for unders. I only have a black and blue in the package to show you. But I would be throwing a Santone finesse jig. Because as you saw today, it will catch those big fish. It really, really is best for the two and three pounders. I would love to have this Santone finesse jig on the west coast. Any of those rocks, those smallmouth lakes, Lake Mead, Lake Havasu. Oh my. Oh my. Anyways, Santone. 7 sixteenths finesse jig this is a black and blue my three favorite colors aside from black and blue black and blue is for the winter my three favorite colors are the same that i would throw in a jig okay jc spicy crow peanut butter and jelly pake's perch and one more bass candy okay so first of all i'm going to talk about Two trailers that I trailer behind this so you can understand there's two different presentations with this finesse jig 7 16 ounce PB and J with the rage tail strike king rage tail baby rage craw remember we talked about the three inch rage craw the four inch rage craw lobster and the bigger profile catches big fish well guess what so does the little profile I had an over today that in the tournament probably if played right Waiting at the right hour would have won the hour. Santone finesse jig, tipped with striking rage tail, baby rage crawl. Okay, that's your swimmer. That's the one that'll have a little more action. If I want more subtlety, I want less action. I don't want those paddling arms. I want them to be a little more subtle and a little more flotation and rising. I'm gonna switch. This here is just a simple Bass Pro Series, but all I'm looking for is, is kind of like a, a Yamamoto Craw. It's just regular Craw trailer without the paddles, okay? And what that does is it just changes the action. I tend to use that more on the Bass Candy, and I love it with that little bit of chartreuse tail. We actually didn't get bit on this one today. I expect that we will get bit on that color in the next couple, two, three weeks. It's hard to be bass candy finesse jig with a small craw and chartreuse stem claws it's hard to beat you're going to get bit in those brush piles in 14 to 15 feet of water you're going to catch big bass you're going to catch small bass you're going to catch everything that's what i'd be throwing entire week unless something changes and i find a definitive pattern i'm going to junk fish but i'm going to concentrate most of my time with a Santone finesse jig, two different combinations of trailers. I am going to fish some docks 
I'm gonna spend a lot of time in four to eight feet of water on points and secondary points until things change again. We get some more rain, the water starts coming back up. We have a cold front that makes the temperature drop back down. Things may change. But right now, we're pretty much back into a late summer pattern. And fishing on the Goat Lake is pretty doggone good. So, awesome day. Thanks to the two gentlemen that went out with me today. I really enjoyed it. You guys made the day special for me. Showing you what to do and having you put that much faith in me really, really makes me feel so humble and so grateful. And I'm thankful that you chose me, Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide, stinky little fisherman. You chose me to show you around. So I appreciate you very much. All of you watching, thank you. Thank you so much for your faith. Those of you that have commented, there was a comment today that just welled me up from yesterday's rundown. Um, basically saying, you know, I'm probably the most honest guy around Fork. You know, now I'm still a fisherman. You know, sometimes this big is this big, and some, you know, I'm still a fisherman. But it welled me up inside because I truly do have conviction, and I tell the truth. And uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that compliment. There's God. There's God watching me. God feeding me. The air I breathe. Everything is from Him, so I can share with you. So, what beautiful grace and mercy He's bestowed on me and all of us, and we need Him right now. I'm not going to preach to you about God. I love to preach to you about fishing. But God loves fishermen, and so do I. So I'm Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide, giving you our Lake Fork Rundown. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on Monday. I'm off tomorrow, but I'm going to come back every day this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and give you as much info as I can.